Okay, when I started this, uh, hope you guys are surviving the heat with uh, no, uh, no, no, no problem. Um, I don't know what the temperature is down there out in uh, the South Bay in my old stomping grounds there in the National City and uh, Chula Vista, but I would imagine that you're, you're probably in the uh, uh, up in the, the the mid to maybe high uh, high 80s. As I mentioned in the announcement uh, this morning, uh, we hit triple digits out here in Winchester. It's about 103 on Saturday. Uh, I think it dropped down to about 100, 101 y yesterday, and right now it's about uh, it's it's in the uh, in the high high 80s, probably about 87, 88, probably get up to about 90, uh, 95, 96, which uh, uh, um, uh, would have been off uh, would, would have been awful uh, for uh, for me still living back in uh, back in the South Bay. But uh, after the uh, the crazy heat we had here over over the weekend, 95 and 96 actually sounds pretty uh, in, in, inviting. Okay, well as, as you can see, uh, I have uh, I have some company here. London is is here uh, taking her uh, little uh, siesta, her little little cat nap. But uh, maybe as the uh, video progresses, she might she might hop on the desk and uh, and hop hop in and say hello. I actually wanted to make this video for you guys outside so you could meet my other feline friends. But it's still a little bit too uh, too warm out there. Hopefully ne next Monday. Um, I can I can record outside and you can meet uh, Nick and uh, Nick and Sniffles. Even though they're out, outdoor outdoor kitties, uh, we uh, there is some uh, shelter for them, so they're they're uh, uh, fully protected for, from the heat. Same for the uh, same for the cocker spaniel as uh, uh, as as well. All right, well this uh, this week we're we're on to uh, a number of, of key topics as we uh, keep pressing further and further into the uh, the Europeans. Among the topics is who we're looking at the. Uh, the Habsburg and the Bourbon kings. These were the Spanish kings of the uh, 17th and into the 18th century. This is the period, of course, where the uh, Spanish uh, settlement and colonization pro process really starts to get into uh, into full gear overdrive with respect to the development of institutions, bureaucracy, uh, b uh, bank banking systems, administrative af affairs, judicial, military things of, of that nature. So I've got a park program on, on that, which I'll say a little bit more about in just a couple of minutes here. And then we're going to check out the English too. As I mentioned uh, last week, we're going to uh, really see a lot more about the English, and of course, the American colonies will be a, a key focus as we uh, uh, keep pressing forward in the heart <clears throat> into the remainder of the uh, of, of the summer session. Uh, the folk, uh, one key focus this week will be what's happening in the American Southwest. So our, our current regions, uh, California, and of course, on into uh, Arizona, New Mexico, and Texas, that'll be a focus uh, this this week as well. I'll tell you a little bit more about those readings and religious issues. That'll be another key consideration we'll be looking at in this week's uh, topic. So without further ado, let me go ahead and get into uh, uh, all of the readings. Tell you what you need, need to do and the uh, and the proper order that you should be go ahead. You should go ahead and uh, explore for the rest uh, for the rest of, of the week. To get things started, I think you should go ahead and check out the uh, article by uh, Arnaudo de, de Leon from uh, Texas and, and Richard Grisman del Castillo, just up, uh, just uh, in, in, in the area, a longtime professor at San Diego State. I met Richard a, a couple of times, very, very nice, nice gentleman. His wife, Rita Sanchez, was a longtime professor at, uh, at Mesa College. Uh, she retired a few years ago, but she still does a lot of the uh, part-time pro-rata -rad stuff, so I still see Rita from time to time on the, uh, on, on, on the Mesa campus. So in this article, Arnoldo and, and Richard talk about some of the uh, uh, items we looked at actually a little bit earlier in the class. Um, just just a quick recap in terms of uh, some of the Spanish uh, uh, Spanish exploration stuff we actually uh, actually dug into in the last week's class, but I think the key focus from the article is about the uh, about the frontier institutions uh, the frontier institutions section in which uh, uh, in which both of them explore the kinds of institutions and enterprises and ideas that were brought into the early Spanish colonial uh, experience. We're talking about Things such as the uh, such as uh, town councils; these are uh, the cabildos. Uh, 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 also, uh, missions, presidios. Of course, uh, in San Diego, we have the we have the uh, uh, the famous mission and the uh, and the presidio. So definitely, if you're uh, if you need something to do during during the summer, uh, definitely check those places out. Uh, you might say that's the uh, birthplace of a uh, birth birthplace of California and grizzled uh, grizzled. Uh, Del Castillo and De Leon get into a lot more about what those institutions mean for not just California but for the entire Spanish colonial experience. And then they talk about other uh, things such as uh, the role of women, cultural institutions, literature, uh, songs, folklore, dances, things of this nature. So a really good panorama in terms of uh, some of the things that the uh, uh, that the pobladores or the uh, the populations in the uh, in these Spanish settlements were engaging in in places like California, Texas, and New Mexico. 
All right, speaking of New Mexico, the place which really got a lot of a, a lot of attention uh, for the Spaniards was that region because of the idea that there was a, a quick uh, quick access to gold, riches, treasure, seven cities of silver, gold, things of this nature, magical uh, kingdoms, uh, uh, princes, and uh, and Amazon women, all of that, all of that fun stuff, and the. Uh, um, the the event which really uh, captured the Spanish imagination that maybe this stuff existed was the uh, legacy of the exploration of the famous Alvar Nunez Cabeza de Vaca. So check out Cabeza de Vaca's film. That's her film for the week. And uh, and our friend Michael Wood. This is the third and final time we're going to be seeing uh, Professor Wood in the in the class. He t he charts uh, Cabeza de Vaca's epic journey and 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 he, and he demonstrates where, for all intents and purposes, he was the first uh, European uh, an an anthropologist. Uh, Whereas, like his contemporaries, he might have had a, a prejudged views about natives, uh, that they were savages, they were beasts, they were this, they were that, they were heathens, uh, they were pagans. Uh, but as he came across more and more of the people in Texas and into, nor into uh, northern Mexico, uh, Wood, Wood points out that his views uh, tend to change over his eight-year odyssey. So, a really fascinating documentary uh, from our friend Mike Michael Wood. So, check that out after you read the uh, De Leon Grosso del Castillo article. After you check out the... Uh, the Cabeza de Vaca film, then going to look at the first PowerPoint program for the uh, for the week on New Mexico. But this basically picks up where the uh, film leaves off and how the Spaniards uh, follow up on Cabeza de Vaca's journey, and we see the explorations of people like Juan de Oñate into New Mexico, um, of, of Coronado, who came who, who came right after uh, uh, after Cabeza de Vaca, and also Diego de Vargas. So this program charts a little bit about the development of what the Spaniards did in New Mexico for the better part of about a century, a century and, uh, uh, and, uh, and, a, and a half. <clears throat> I'll finish off with New Mexico with the uh, readings from Between the Conquest. Martha Menchaca and uh, David Gutierrez have some, have some fascinating articles. There's a little bit of discussion about the Pueblo Revolt, but for, for the most part, both Menchaca and uh, Gutierrez get into more racial uh, elements. That, that is, how, uh, uh, how the Spaniards brought their ideas in terms of uh, racial uh, subdivisions of, of, of people. But, oh, but, but over time, these divisions tend to get blurred as you get away from the center of Spain and, of course, the center of, of Mexico, where a lot of the these practices, these uh, divisions in, uh, in, in class, uh, labor, sex, race, uh, were, 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 were quite pronounced. But as you get away from the, from the uh, metropolitan, the, uh, uh, at that time, metropolitan areas, these divisions tend to get li a little bit blurred, and that's what Menchaca and Morso Gutierrez get into in the, uh, in the Between the Conquest readings. Now, the Pueblo Revolt itself took place within a wider context in terms of Spanish imperial rivalries uh, with, a, with, a, with their enemies and their allies, enemies and allies at the same time. We're talking, of course, about the English, the French, and to lesser extent, the, the, the Dutch. So check out all of that with a powerful program about the uh, Habsburg and Bourbon kings. The Habsburgs uh, ruled Spain until the... Uh, end of the 17th century, when King Charles II died, there was no male, male heir. So after his death, uh, then we had the, what was called the War of the Spanish Succession. And then at the, uh, at, the, at the end of the day, the Bourbons from France, or Los uh, Borbones, they came on the scene and took, over, and, and took over the rule of the Spanish throne. And for the better part of the 18th century, the Bourbons did a, a spectacular job of cleaning up the empire, restructuring, refurbishing it, culminating with the, uh, with the reign of the famous King Charles III, or Carlos and uh, tercero, under Charles's reign, here's where we see the uh, Spaniards really begin to make their move into California. So check, so check out all that in the uh, in the uh, Habsburg and Bourbon, uh, uh, Habsburg and, and, and Bourbon uh, PowerPoint program. Follow up on that immediately with the Spanish California PowerPoint program. This gets into more of what's happening with Father Serra, Gaspar de Portola, uh, all of those guys that we associate with San Diego history. Uh, this is, but this within the context of what's happening with respect to Europe and and in Spain during the tenure of King Charles III and his uh, right hand man, his point man for the uh, for the colonies and territories, uh, the famous. Uh, the same as Jose de, de, de Galvez. So, uh, uh, so definitely you want to keep track of what Galvez is all about as you see this PowerPoint program. And then to finish off with the California segment, then read the article by Antonia Castaneda in Between the Conquest. Uh, Professor Castaneda has an excellent, excellent article, talks about the uh, mission system, but a lot of the problems inherent in the mission system and how the religious officials, you might say, were caught between the devil and the deep blue sea because as a... As a 
Dustin Yellow points out, the soldiers, let's put it this way, weren't exactly the most the model people at this, at, this, at this point in time. So if Father Seda and his colleagues felt that the Indians were savages, heathens, barbarians, whatever you want to call them, uh, let's put it that the Spanish soldiers uh, definitely took the cake when it came to uh, these types of, uh, uh, for lack of a better term, uh, nasty and na naughty uh, activities. Of course, these are mild terms, but when you read the uh, section by Castaneda, you'll see that, uh, that I think these terms, in a uh, general sense, do apply to what the soldiers are all about, so definitely check on, on, on all of that. All right, after we finish off with the, with, 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 with the Spain items, then let's go ahead now and move into the, uh, to the American items. And here, of course, where the U.S. Uh, lecture outlines come in. And uh, immediately go on to, to outline two. This talks about what's happening in England and picks up where the PowerPoint from England left off last, last week. We get a sense of uh, what's happening in the American colonies, not just in New England and in uh, the Chesapeake, the Jamestown region, but also in other parts such as the middle colonies. We're talking about Pennsylvania, New York, Delaware, New Jersey. And as I pointed to you last week, the most important point, I think, from last week's video is the fact that because the English colonization system wasn't a top-down enterprise, there was more room for experimentation. So, in other words... Uh, whereas everything from Mexico to Cuba to uh, Argentina uh, to Puerto Rico was, for all intents and purposes, a uniform system imposed by the Spanish crown, what was happening in the English colonies, it was uh, uh, just dark landscape in terms of a chaos everywhere. There was no central rule, so basically you might say these were like anything goes. So what was happening in Jamestown was much different than what's happening in Pennsylvania, and that was totally different than what's happening in Massachusetts. So a lot of those key differences in terms of political and social experimentation, that's what's happening in the, uh, in the American colonies. That's what Outline 2 is going to uh, focus in on. And immediately after Outline 2, check out the final reading from Between the Conquest this week by Ramon Paredes, because as uh, people in New England are beginning to uh, live their lives and build their institutions, their churches, their, their businesses, their family and community networks, of course, they have a lot of, uh, shall we say, less than complimentary views toward the, uh, ca toward the Catholics. And as a uh, and of course, this is no surprise, Puritans and Catholics, as we uh, saw previously, not exactly the best of friends back, back in these days. And of course, the ones who were the Catholics uh, were the Spaniards and of course the, and of course the Mexicans. So you did, uh, do the math, everybody. The, uh, the feeling was that the Mexicans among these uh, Puritans, they were somehow seen as the worst of two worlds. They were the evil mixture of these nasty, dirty Spaniards and the savage, heathen a Aztecs. So, but this gets to a lot, lot more about that in terms of how the roots of anti-Mexican sentiment really starts to ferment and grow in places like Boston, Salem, New Haven, Providence, and the New e the rest of New, New England colonies. Okay, let me quickly uh, uh, wrap things up because we're already approaching 13 minutes on the video here. Uh, go ahead and, 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 and proceed with outline three in which uh, uh, we get into a little bit more about economic development in the American colonies and of course the rise of slavery. Outline four gets into how uh, the English colonists begin to establish their own way modes of thinking and begin to question authority and this culminates with the double whammy of the Great Awakening which is religious revival and the Enlightenment which is more scientific awakening, scientific exploration. So even though these two things don't really seem to clash, you might say scientific inquiry versus religious fundamentalism, what they do, uh, both uh, strands do illustrate is the fact that the colonists, the English colonists, are beginning to have their own ways of life, their own ways of thinking, and uh, finish off the, week, the week's uh, material with the Great Awakening PowerPoint program, in which we see that by the time we get into the uh, early parts of the 18th century, about the 1730s, 1740s, the American colonists are starting to get closer to the idea that maybe there's something better out there than being part of the English crown. Uh, there's no... Uh, there's no push for independence yet, but they're slowly but surely getting to that point by 1730 and 1740, and by the 1750s, that's when they begin to get pushed over the edge, as we'll see coming up into next week's so readings. All right, well, that's it, everybody. Uh, <clears throat> Miss London over here didn't, didn't budge uh, one, uh, one, uh, one, one bit. I don't know, maybe my voice puts her to sleep or something to that effect. But next week, I'll try to record outside, and uh, we'll try to meet uh, my the outdoor felines. That would be uh, Nick the albino and Sniffles the, the black Persian. All right, everyone, so that's the plan for the week. Uh, uh, have a great week, and definitely uh, enjoy the 4th of uh, J July holiday. And uh, I'll come back with another announcement for uh, uh, talking about the... Uh, 
your scores for the uh, for the latest journal entry coming up tomorrow. And then, of course, uh, we'll get on, on, on into other stuff, uh, whatever else is going on this week, I'll talk about in the announcements for the rest of the week. All right, so take everybody, try to stay cool, and I'll have a new, a, a new uh, video for you coming up next Monday.